good. Well, thank you guys for um, coming today just to learn a little bit more about program-wide pyramid model um, implementation. We are so excited um, to roll this out with our districts in the state. We already have it rolled out with a lot of our child care programs. And so we are so excited to get to um, explore this with districts as well. So today we're going to take some time to explore the opportunity for program-wide implementation. So um, I apologize in advance if I get excited and hyper about it because it's something I'm super passionate about. Um, it's something I talk about probably outside of my job more than, <laughs> more than I should, but it comes up. So um, this is, again, a district information session. If you are here out side of that sector, that is totally fine. This information is great for you to have and we'll make sure you get connected at the end with the appropriate um, support system for you as well. So we're gonna spend some, some time today exploring the tiers of pyramid model, um, the benefits of pyramid model, and why this framework is so beneficial for our kiddos in our state. Um, whether you are well-versed in this, you've been through some training, or this is a new framework for you. Um, again, it's a brief overview, a refresher to kind of let you know what it entails. And then we will move into how you can um, start implementing. So we are gonna ask that um, if you have any questions throughout the session, you can drop them in the Q&A box, and we will get to those questions either throughout the webinar, um, and any that remain unanswered, we will um, address at the end. And then also all attendees, um, your videos and microphones have been muted, and we are going to just uh, keep going. And as, as participants uh, log in, um, just remember it's recorded. So if you missed anything, we're going to be sending that out so you can review it later if you miss anything. Um, so as we get started, we want to introduce our panelists, you know, just so you know that there's just not four floating heads in the side for you to enjoy. Um, I'm Nicole Hudgens, and I am the Pyramid Model Implementation Coach with Pyramid Pieces. And next we have Ellen. Hi, I'm Ellen. I am the Behavior Support Specialist um, with Pyramid Pieces, and I will be working with districts as part of the Behavior Support Network. Good morning, I'm Jennifer Harris. I am the statewide pyramid model coordinated working with pyramid pieces um, underneath the Skippy umbrella. Good morning, everyone. I'm Carrie Kennegeiser. I am the program director for Skippy or South Carolina Partnerships for Inclusion. And Skippy is kind of working to do the district side of pyramid implementation. So you might be wondering, oh, there's Skippy and there's pyramid pieces. And our vision for pyramid pieces is that it is a cross sector um, organization that supports all early childhood sectors to implement the pyramid model. But again, anything that falls under districts uh, is going to fall under our district team, which is through Skippy. So we're really excited that you all are here today. We are. So we're going to just kind of give a brief overview of the pyramid model and what it is. So the pyramid model is a framework of evidence-based practices um, for promoting young children's healthy social and emotional development. Um, when you're looking at pyramid model, there are tiers. It starts with an effective workforce. Um, and that is the foundation for um, making sure that it's successful. Uh, Well-prepared early educators are the foundation for successfully implementing pyramid model. Without our educators, then there's no strong foundation, right? We have to have our teachers and they're so valuable to us. Um, so then tier one, those are those universal promotions. Those are for all children. These are focused on building positive relationships with children, um, families, and other adults in the program. And so we're working on setting up that environment that's going to prevent problems before they start. So it's not about there's a problem, let's fix it. Let's try to fit, let's pr to try to prevent it before it even gets started. Um, this can look like arranging materials and toys in a way that makes them accessible for all children, um, creating those predictable schedules and routines for kiddos and even for adults. We love a good predictable schedule and routine too, right? Um, and then we're gonna move into those tier two supports, which is that secondary prevention. And those are for some children. Um, so tier two is planning for how to respond to children's behaviors through the systematic teaching of targeted social emotional supports. So those are things like our friendship skills, problem solving, emotional literacy, um, all things that are crucial 
for our kiddos to engage um, with each other. And again, I know it says it's for some children, but those skills benefit all children as well. And then after that tier two level, we move into tier three, and that's planning for the few children who might need those individual, very specific tertiary interventions. And so, you know, that those are the supports that move beyond just those first two tiers. And we have Ellen, who introduced herself as our behavior support network um, person in place to help with those things. So the beauty of pyramid model implementation is that you've got a support system built in. Um, and that's what we're here to support you through each of these stages. So with that, um, <coughs> excuse me, with that evidence-based, with the evidence-based practice, um, that development of infrastructure to, is there to support the implement, implementation of those practices in the future. So again, when we try these things out, when we're you know trying out the different support systems, it's not a, okay, great, that worked. No, it's becoming part of your classroom culture. And so when these things become part of who you are in a classroom, in your district, in your, in your center, wherever you are, then it's gonna benefit your kiddos, your teachers, your families in the long haul. So districts that participate um, in our pyramid model program-wide implementation, they're gonna receive guidance from the pyramid model implementation coach, that's me. Um, and I will assist you with your uh, pyramid model implementation leadership team, which is one of the most crucial elements and supporting your coaches to support your district preschool program. So I'm a coach for your coaches. Um, the leadership team and the coaches will also have access to our behavior support, uh, our behavior specialist, um, Ellen, and then she will guide the district school behavior support team um, to address those tier three concerns. She'll support your behavior coaches that you already have in place. Um, so she's a valuable resource because we all know sometimes you feel like you've tried everything and you're trying to figure out next steps. She can help problem solve and support you through that. So again, that was a very brief overview of pyramid model. Um, but what are the benefits? Why do this? Why, in, why introduce a new culture in your school? What's the point? Well, because pyramid model promotes healthy social and emotional development for young children in your care. Um, it prevents children's use of challenging behaviors to get their needs met. And it provides teachers with more tools that they can use appropriately to intervene if challenging behaviors persist. So it promotes, it prevents, it provides. It's something that is going to support not only your kiddos in the classroom, but your teachers. It's gonna give them tools and resources that are gonna benefit them each day in the classroom. Again, as we mentioned before, it is not just a one and done type deal. Once you begin working with a uh, pyramid model and implementing it in your program, in your classrooms, in your district. Once that's part of your culture, it's going to be the cultural norm to implement some of the strategies that you'll strategies that you'll learn as you go through the process. All right, so what does the implementation process look like? Um, as I mentioned, it is a process. Um, there are four stages. There's exploration, installation, um, initial implementation and full implementation. So when you're looking at this, it looks like a beautiful checklist, right? Like it's like, woohoo, we can check off exploration. We can check off this. That's not how pyramid model works. Pyramid model is a fluid framework that meets your district, your program, where it is. Um, you start off an exploration where you're building readiness and capacity, you're setting your priorities, you're kind of getting a feel for who's gonna be on your leadership team, you're conducting your staff buy-in to make sure everyone is on board. And then you move to installation where you're gonna develop and strengthen those critical elements. Um, leadership team training is happening, there's staff PD happening. And then you have your initial implementation where those critical elements are in place and and they're operational and you're monitoring the implementation outcomes. And then at full implementation, you continue to monitor and, monitor and to support those critical elements. Again, it looks like, bam, we can check these things off, but in reality, it's built so that you have the opportunity to continue to grow. Um, growth ebbs and flows with pyramid model, because as we know, 
each year, things change in the classroom, correct? Pyramid model is a three to five year process. Um, the stages are not linear. If you, for instance, are in the exploration phase, you're moving into, into installation, and then you have some roadblocks that come up. Those roadblocks do not say, well, guess you're done. <laughs> Can't do pyramid model now. No, those roadblocks are opportunities to take a step back, reflect, problem solve, and grow together and figure out what those next steps are. So there's always a chance where you might move back and forth, but that's the beauty of it being a three to five year process. Pyramid model implementation is not an initiative. It's not another thing to add to the list of things your district is participating in. Um, pyramid model's goal is part of your culture. It becomes part of who you are in your district, in your classroom. And so that is why it can move back and forth. Um, and with it being a three to five year process, if you're getting new staff, we're gonna make sure that in your preschool classrooms, we're gonna make sure that those teachers are also equipped and we will work with your leadership team and your coaches to ensure that all those needs are being met as well. So the roadmap to program-wide implementation, it's got several critical, uh, critical elements that are needed. Leadership team, staff buy-in, family engagement, program-wide expectations, uh, classroom implementation of the pyramid model, database decision-making, staff professional development and support plans, and our behavior support network. So we're going to go through each of these elements and kind of talk a little bit about their benefits, why they're important, and how they support that program-wide implementation. And I apologize if I go too fast because I get really excited. All right, so leadership team. Um, the first critical component that's needed for program-wide implementation um, for it to be successful is to have a dedicated leadership team. Uh, the leadership team, it guides the implementation of the pyramid model framework across the program. Um, it's typically, typically comprised of a program admin, uh, representatives from the teaching staff, a family member. Again, this is not principals and just admins making the decisions. Um, for a leadership team to be successful, everyone has to be at the table. Everyone's input has to be heard. Everyone's input is valued. Um, as the team gels together and begins to come up with action plans and setting goals, uh, the team will work on a program-wide plan that's gonna include those individualized behavior supports for kiddos who have those challenging behaviors, um, professional development plans, uh, what, how we're gonna support the teachers, how we're gonna make sure that families are engaged in a part of the process, and then how they're gonna use the data to make and guide the decisions for implementation. So the leadership team is one of the most crucial components for implementation because without a strong leadership team, um, then there's going to be a, several roadblocks to having successful implementation. Next is staff buy-in. Everyone's valued when it comes to implementation. Uh, for implementation to be successful, you have to have staff buy-in. Um, you want your staff to be involved in the process, and they have to agree that they're willing to participate. Um, no one enjoys being voluntold to do something. Um, if you want your implementation process to be successful, you really need to be supporting what your staff's thoughts, concerns, if they're excited about it. We got to identify where our staff is, um, where teachers feel like they are in this process as well. So initially there is a staff buy-in session where we identify, you know, if the staff for your district is on board with participating, but from there, if it is a thumbs up, if it is a go, it's the role of the leadership team to continue to monitor, monitor and support staff buy-in. So it's going to be an ongoing basis, touching, touching base. Hey, how are we feeling? You know, what, what can we do to support you through this? Identifying if roadblocks come up and giving teachers that platform to say, hey, I'm struggling with this because... And then that gives the coaches the opportunity to problem solve. Again, it's a fluid process. So if there are roadblocks, if down the road, the staff are struggling with X, Y, and Z, we can problem solve with you to work through that. 
um, there are going to be things that come up. That's life, right? So when you not only have your team in place with your district um, to problem solve, but you have our team to support you through those instances, you have, you're more likely to be able to continue on in the process and stay on track. The other component that is a lot of fun is family engagement. Parent involvement is so crucial. It is so important to have our parents and families on board in the process. Um, that collaborative partnership is going to prepare not only um, for a successful pyramid model implementation, but that, that collaboration with families is gonna strengthen your relationships in your district. So this can be done by simply sharing information, um, providing families with information and support and guiding like children's development and social emotional skills and teaming to support individual children when needed. So oftentimes, I mean, as a mom myself, sometimes you don't know if you have a seat at that table, but when you're told you have a seat and you're included and involved, it makes it so much easier to really support the things that are happening in your schools. Uh, the next critical element is our program-wide expectations. So, you know, many schools have in place their school-wide expectations. Oftentimes you see their mascot um, advocating for those things outside the building at my daughter's school. They are right there what the expectations were for behavior. So with our preschool kiddos, it's important to adopt those program-wide expectations that are developmentally appropriate for our, for our littlest learners in our schools. Um, they provide a shared focus and language that describe behavior expectations for all children, staff, and families. So if you look at the expectations that we have up here, we have, we are safe, we are kind, we are responsible. Um, those are expectations that are for everyone. Those are not child specific expectations. We want our teachers to be safe, kind, and responsible. We want our administrators to be safe, kind, and responsible. Our parents, our children, everyone in our school community, we want them to have these expectations, right? So during the process, when we're going through leadership team and the leaders are helping come up with ideas on how they're going to bring families in, how they're going to get staff buy-in, how they're going to develop program-wide expectations. Um, you want to get input from your teachers and from families on what your program-wide expectations should and could be. So that could be where you have families and staff vote on the ones that make the most sense for you and your program. The beauty of this is not all of them are going to be identical, and that's okay. We're not trying to make a cookie cutter experience for all the schools in our state, but we want to give a voice to the teachers, to the families, to our ad admin team to really come together and create and plan together collaboratively. And so when those are voted on and they've, they've been chosen, they're posted throughout the school, throughout the program, throughout the classrooms, and they're also provided to families. So when families have the opportunity to discuss these things at home as well, it's gonna be further opportunity for that to be successful in your classroom. Because if we have support at home, then we're gonna see it further grow in our schools, right? So, um, staff are encouraged to acknowledge engagement in these things. So if we have a friend who's being kind, you know, we want our teachers to acknowledge, wow, when you did X, Y, and Z, that was a super kind thing to do. You met one of our expectations and to celebrate those things, to give value to those things. And also, um, and this is just outside, you know, when we have other staff members, if we have a co-teacher who's being kind, acknowledge that, acknowledging that in front of your kiddos is also helping to model how we can celebrate others' successes when they are meeting expectations. Um, that positive descriptive feedback can go a long way with our kiddos and with the grownups too. I know I enjoy positive descriptive feedback. All right, so the next element that we look at is our classroom implementation of the pyramid model. 
Um, and with that, we talk about our teapot, which are which is the teaching pyramid observation tool. So I am going to pause here because I know that a lot of people who have hopped in and who have registered for this have had experience with the teapot. Um, and maybe there are some misconceptions about what the teapot is. The teapot is not a punitive assessment. It's not a grade. It's not a you missed X, Y, and Z. The teapot is an observation tool for your coaches. And that just is there to help your coaches identify what areas of support they need to go with when they're supporting your team with making a plan. So when when your leadership team is trying to identify what trainings are needed, what specific supports are needed, the teapot is there to help identify what's the first place we need to look. It is not there to grade a teacher. It is not there to make a teacher feel as though they have failed a test because this is simply a small chunk of your day. And it's a, we saw it or we didn't see it in that small chunk. This is why it's not a test because we're only getting a very small sampling of your daily routine. And guess what? Sometimes our daily routines do not go as planned. Sometimes there is a fire drill or sometimes so-and-so gets sick and a sub has to step in at the last minute. That's okay. That's why it's just a snapshot to give us an idea of what supports are needed. So if you've had experience with a teapot in the past um, and it's something that has made you anxious, I'm here to just affirm you and say, it is not about your performance score. That is simply a tool to help your coach. Um, and so hopefully that helps if there's any teapot anxiety out there. So next we, uh, one of our focuses are uh, the database decision-making. So again, when you decide to join that path of implementation for pyramid model, it is not a checklist of things to check off. You know, we're not just like, check, 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 we've done this. We're going to look at the data. We're going to look at where what supports are needed. And we're going to use the data to decide what are the next steps um, and what tools can we use. There's a variety of tools out there that are beneficial. It is not a one size fits all thing where everyone has to use the same thing. We're going to identify what you need and how we can support you in those specific needs. Um, that is the beauty of meeting, you know, meeting people where they are. You know, we we promote that kiddos to be met where they are, um, not try to make them all look cookie cutter. Well, as a school, as a district, we want your leadership team to meet you where you are. So we'll support them in finding avenues and paths that are gonna support you in the ways that you need to be supported. And then we have the professional development and staff support plans. So these plans, um, again, they come from identifying what needs there are, right? You have to have training and coaching and support um, to effectively implement the pyramid model practices. Um, we don't expect you just to be like, okay, well, we've got this, we know it. No, that's where we come in. Like we're able to um, support your coaches so that they can be offer the best support for you. Um, the district leadership team will work with the implementation coach, which is me, and the behavior specialist, which is Ellen, and uh, we will help support those coaches as they are providing that ongoing assistance to teachers that are participating in program-wide implementation. Um, and then as we continue to move on, we have our behavior support network, and I'm going to turn it over to Ellen because this is her baby um, to share a little bit more about that. Thank you, Nicole. I'm Ellen and I am the behavior support specialist. And she has talked a lot about teaming. She's talked a lot about family involvement and that's gonna continue over into behavior specialist position as well. We're gonna do whoever you have decided to include in the school district as your behavior support person. That's the person that your teachers are gonna to turn to. I'm gonna work with that behavior support person on developing how do we look at children's behaviors with teaming. Um, I will get involved at tier three. So that means when tier one, tier two strategies are being implemented, you may still have a child who has behaviors that go above and beyond and are still perplexed by them. And when you have that child that you were perplexed with their behavior, 
that's when you will contact me and I will help you look at that behavior, help you um, design data collection. And that's going to also include whoever is involved with that child, whether it's that teacher, whether it is a specialist, the assistant teacher, the family, um, whoever needs to be at that table, we're going to collect data on behavior. We're going to analyze that behavior, really looking at the function of behavior. Why is the children use child using this behavior to meet their needs, develop an individualized intervention plan, and hopefully teach that child the social and emotional skills they need to help decrease that behavior. And in the meantime, if you have a child who has really intense behaviors that's impacting safety in the classroom, um, I'm happy to come alongside and we will look at developing a safety plan, which is a temporary plan to get those behaviors under control as we work to really implement the individualized intervention plan. Um, it's not a magic wand. We don't change behavior overnight. It is a process. And so that's what the Behavior Support Network will do. All right, thank you. Sorry, I was struggling to unmute myself. <laughs> so thank you so much, Ellen. Um, we are so excited that you are there to support those uh, tier three needs um, and give that just additional support to our coaches, teachers, and then ultimately our kiddos. So it's all about building capacity. Um, it takes a lot of elements for things to be successful. I know it seems like a lot, like it seems like a lot, but all of the pieces are crucial for success. You have to have vision, skills, incentives, resources, and an action plan for there to be success. We know if there are pieces missing, then it's going to lead to other outcomes. It doesn't mean that it won't be successful in the future, but again, it does create some of those roadblocks. So if there's no vision, but all the other elements are in place, it's going to lead to confusion. If there's no incentives, if there's no really reason where, where your teachers are seeing this is beneficial, it's going to still work, but it's going to be gradual change. Um, if there are no resources provided, it's going to be frustrating. And if there's no plan in place, then you're going to have a false start. Again, this doesn't mean that there won't eventually be success. But there are going to be those roadblocks that often cause some frustration when we don't see things fall into place. And so really building capacity is crucial for success uh, for implementing pyramid model and identifying what your capacity is. All right. So are you ready? So what does this look like? What, what was this whole thing about, right? Like that's a lot of information, Nicole. What am I supposed to do with it? Well, as you reflect on some of the information that we shared, um, you're going to have the opportunity to apply to participate to be an, uh, to implement the pyramid model program wide in your district. So the application is going to open in early August, and it's going to be sent to the registered participants here when it's opened. Um, again, it's not a one and done training where we check off that we did it and we move on. It's a multi year process, um, and it's going to have the support of the pyramid pieces team um, available throughout that three to five year it's not going to be we help you in the beginning and then we disappear no we're here for the long haul to support you um, participating districts we're going to receive training coaching consultation and then other assistance that matches their specific needs so again we're here to support you um, should you choose to apply now, maybe you're looking at all this and you're like, oh my goodness, um, that seems like a whole lot. I don't know that I have the capacity right now. This is amazing. I want to support pyramid model in my district, but I don't know if we have the capacity for whatever reason. Um, we do have other opportunities for you to build capacity. So in the fall, we'll have our Pyramid 101 professional learning community that's going to be virtual that's available. So that is an opportunity to further um, strengthen your foundation when it comes to pyramid model. And then on October 19th, we're going to have our early childhood inclusion conference in Columbia. And then in the winter of 2023, man, and our year's going by so quick, um, we're going to have a just-in-time supports community of practice that'll be virtual. All these things are supports that are going to help promote 
your foundation and pyramid model to help build your capacity. And then February 16th to the 18th, um, we'll have our SC Council for Exceptional Children annual conference that'll be in Charleston. So there's lots of opportunities for growth. If you want to apply, but don't feel confident in doing it right now, there will be additional opportunities at a later date, but you can also participate in some of these op training opportunities as well. Um, we are going to look at some of the questions that have come through. Um, and again, let's say you, your brain is all full right now and you can't think of questions, please know you can reach out to us after this with your questions and we will happily um, chat with you and identify how we can support you through those. So Jennifer, I'm gonna prompt you for questions that have come in the chat or the Q&A box. Um, well, we currently are waiting for some, but please, if you have any questions or anything that we can answer for you, please put your questions in the Q&A and we will answer them as soon as we can. Absolutely. And again, I am uh, super excited about the opportunity to support the kiddos um, in our state um, through supporting our teachers and our districts and our coaches. Um, we have so many opportunities to help promote their social emotional development. So this is just this is just a framework that's going to help this become a part of their not only classroom culture, but hopefully, when we partner with their families, their family culture as well. Okay, we have some questions coming in, Nicole. So okay. our first question says, what happens if not all staff is ready for the buy-in? Is there a certain number that needs to be in agreement? Yes, so with the staff buy-in, um, we try to get at least 80% in agreement to move forward. Um, if that number is not met, it's not like a, well, nope, not gonna do it. It's a, let's see what some of those roadblocks are and see if there's questions that they might have that we can answer that might clear up either some misconceptions or some misunderstandings. And then we can try to problem solve and see what if moving forward is our next step or if we need to explore down another path first. Thank you. My pleasure. Um, will Head Start programs be able to participate? Absolutely. So Head Start programs that are not a, a, affiliated with the district um, will uh, work with our child care partners who with Pyramid Pieces. Um, Carrie Trevetti is uh, the behavior, lead behavioralist, ugh, my tongue is tied, the lead behavior specialist there. And she is um, supporting programs right now, including some Head Starts with a program-wide implementation. So yes, there is a support system in place for Head Start as well. We support Head Start at district levels as well. Did you say that? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, what age level will this model focus on? So we will be working with uh, preschools in your districts. And so our, our counterpart with child care centers are infant through that preschool age, zero to five, that age bracket. So we'll be working in those 4K preschool classrooms as our main focus for districts. Yeah. And any 3K that might come up. And any 3K yeah, that we have. Okay, thank you. Next, um, from Jenny, if we are doing this district wide, can we have multiple behavior support persons for Ellen to work with on tier three needs? Ellen, do you want to unmute yourself and um, add to that? Absolutely. Yes, you can have as many behavior support people on your staff that you feel is necessary. Some for some districts, that may be one person. For others, that may be more than one. It might be one person at each location. There's a lot of variability on how to make that work. Thank you. Um, will you send us a link to the application? Absolutely. That is actually coming up soon. We will be sending out a link um, when the application is live. So if you registered for this, um, then you will get the link to apply. Um, so no worries there. We will make sure you get it. Yes. And if you did miss any of the webinar up to now, we will make sure to share that uh, recorded version with you if you needed to review before you apply. Absolutely. 
Okay. Um, Paige asks, if I heard correctly, you mentioned that you work with child care centers. I'm the director of an early learning center that serves children ages infant to three. We are part of a school district. Could my staff participate if no other schools in the district participated? So I'm assuming so. Um, let me let me get clarification since you're affiliated with the district, but you're not part of the district. I can touch base with Carrie Trevetti and see what that looks like because that is a different scenario. And we want to make sure that everybody gets the supports they need. And so Paige, we will make sure to get back to you with an email later um, today with an answer. Uh, Jean asks, what if districts do not have behavioral coaches in place? And so this might be an Ellen question. Yes, um, that is fine. You would designate whoever you feel would be appropriate on your staff to serve as that person. And I will be working to coach that person in the process of um, specializing in assisting your teachers with behaviors. I'm not expecting you to have someone who is solely a behavior coach. Thank you. Um, how will this model fit with SIRDEP guidelines? All right, so the behavior, not, not behavior support, <laughs> pyramid model, sorry. I was tagging, I was falling off of Ellen. Um, anything that's supporting support, social and emotional development for kiddos is gonna fall in to those guidelines. Um, we're gonna help our kiddos be successful by modeling and creating this framework. So it's, it's gonna fall into place because it is a support system that's gonna help decrease challenging behaviors. And so uh, we can follow up more with more specifics. I feel like when we talk about certain guidelines, we can go down a rabbit hole mm -hmm. and take a long trip. Um, but yeah, we can definitely follow up more with that if you want some more specific information about that. Jennifer, will you write that down so I don't forget? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, I can. And I, I can. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yes, I will make sure to do that. Uh, Tiffany, Tiffany, we will definitely get you an answer um, later today. Okay. Um, and our next question is. Um, is the support person someone from your department or additional personnel the district has to hire? Now, I'm, I think maybe we can talk about um, not just behavioral support, but maybe our program coach that's in the school as well, that's, that is the coach for the teachers. Could we look at both of those things? I think Ellen has touched on the behavioral support coach. So um, oftentimes there are coaches that are employed that have roles with supporting the, you know, t uh, different school, in, either in the school or a district coach. But if those people aren't in place, um, that's okay too. So my role is to coach your coaches. If you don't have a coach, then we can, again, like Ellen said, we can figure out who would be a good fit to fill that role. And then I would support them in the coaching process. Um, because again, some schools have coaches built in, some don't. And so not having a built-in coach is not an automatic you're not, you don't have accessible, you're not able to, you know, go through the application process. You're not able to participate. That is not an automatic no. Um, for example, in our child care programs, they don't have coaches built in. And so they have, their coach is Carrie who coaches them. They don't have the capacity to add additional people at this time. Um, districts often have people in roles that can help with that coaching process. In a perfect world, in a perfect world, every school would have all the coaches they need for all the things, um, but we don't live in that perfect world. So those people that you have in your district, in your schools that are willing to support this, this venture and this classroom culture that, you're, that we're trying to implement, um, I'm their support system. And again, this is the reason like, the whole, this whole informational session is happening now. And then there's time before the application. It's so that you can have those conversations with people in your district to identify, do we have the capacity? And then finding people who might be willing to fill a coaching role if you don't have that in place. Um, 
And that is also something I can support you with if you're trying to figure out like, do we have somebody who can do this? I'm not really sure how to ask about this. Um, in a minute, my email address will be up and you can reach out to me and we can problem solve together. Um, we wanted you to have time to really think through, to be able to share the recording of this with other people in the district who might be helping you make the decision about applying to be an implementation site. And so um, that's why there's a, some time to really flesh it out, see how it fits for your district. Um, but yes, I will support whoever is your coach in your district at your at the district level, whether it's you know a specific school that's going to participate first, however it fleshes out. Again, it's not going to look the same for everybody. Um, we want it to fit your needs, not what we say it should be or what your district says it should be or this district says it should be. We want to make sure it fits your specific needs for your district, your schools. And if it doesn't look the same as another district, that is a hundred percent okay. Well, we have come to the end of our list of questions. Um, if anybody has another one that they want to add, we're going to, we have just a couple of closing slides and we can definitely make sure we um, have opportunity if another one arises. Oh, just kidding. Um, would you recommend using this video as an overview or jump start for teachers who are already trained? Um, maybe about fall staff development or teacher buy-in. So how would this be different than maybe our staff buy-in? Um, so the staff buy-in goes through more details, more specific things um, involving implementation. Um, this is a really brief overview. Um, and so once you apply and are selected, then when we see it, when we check in with staff on how they're feeling, it goes in a lot more in-depth information. So if you want to share the recording with staff to give them an idea of what it kind of is a little bit like, that's fine. Um, Cause it will be housed on our YouTube page um, for Skippy. And that link will go out when we follow up with participants. Like we're gonna send you a link to that as well. So if anybody needs to watch it or review it, it's available. Um, so you're welcome to let anybody watch it. Um, it might just give them a little quick snippet. And then when we do the staff buy-in, it's a little bit more in depth. Right. And we are always happy to answer any other questions you might have. Um, as you are going through and rewatching it or sharing it with others. Absolutely. And so for you to send those questions, if something comes up later down the line, um, my email address is here as well as Ellen's if you have those behavior support specific questions. Um, Jennifer's email is available and um, Kiri Kennengeiser is also there as well. So take a quick, get your phone out, take a picture of it so you don't lose it. Um, but also if you joined us today, and you're not connected with a district, um, you can reach out to Carrie Trevetti and she can give you more information on what this looks like for our childcare sector, it includes Head Starts, um, early Head Starts as well. So if you're interested in learning more about the availability for those supports, um, by all means, please reach out to Carrie. She has done a phenomenal job um, supporting our childcare uh, participants um, this year and it's been really fun to watch and see how um, pyramid model has made an impact in that sector as well so please feel free to reach out to her um but yeah if there are no more questions that is all we have for today um i thank you guys so much for participating um please feel free after you receive the email with the link um to uh to the recording to share that with um, your other district partners who might need to review it. Um, or if you know someone who signed up and couldn't make it or wanted to sign up, feel free to share the, the video so they can get more information as well. Okay, thank you all again so much. Thank you for your time today. Thanks everybody.